Hey guys, how are you? My name is Michael Williams. Today we are going to talk about your Pro 90D smooth speech journey. That is what it's going to take for you to get from wherever you are now with your speech in your life, whatever it's going to take for you to get from where you are now to where you want to be. And where is it that you want to be? Well, you probably want to get to the place where you're speaking smoothly, you're speaking easily and effortlessly, you're able to speak with flow, you're not thinking about speaking, you're speaking smoothly, clearly, calmly, and confidently. Where you're able to say whatever you want, whenever you want, and the way that you want. So what is it going to take for you to get there using the Pro 90D speech system? And this can probably be applied to some other systems as well, but today we'll be talking about the Pro 90D speech system. And this is very, very important for you to understand. Why? Because if you don't understand the valleys and the dips that you're going to go through and what to expect, then what will happen is you'll probably set up false or unrealistic expectations. And when you do that, you'll become disappointed, you'll become discouraged, you'll become distracted, you'll become frustrated, and you may not achieve your goal. You may not make it to or arrive at your destination. Does that make sense? So if you understand that this is not, and you'll hear me say this, this is not usually a linear process, it's more of a zigzaggy process, then you'll set realistic expectations and when you do that you will win. You will win. You will arrive at your destination. So let's talk about excuse me, what you can expect on this journey. And it is a journey. It's a journey. So you can expect, and if I can draw this for you, well, let me just basically tell you what often people expect when they're on this journey. That is, they, they're taking either the self-study or they're doing the coaching, which accelerates this process. What they expect is something like, let's just use black for this. They expect something that looks like a linear process, right? They expect a linear process. And for the vast majority of people, it's not a linear process. It's not that you get started here, right? You get started here and you just keep going and boom, now you are at smooth speech. Okay, after whatever, it's 90 days or three months or six months, boom, you're just there. That it just doesn't happen like that for most people, right? Now, let me tell you what does happen. What happens for most people is, and I'll explain this in, a, in more depth in just a minute, is you experience this increase, this initial increase, okay? And this increase happens as a result of something that we call the placebo effect, right? The placebo effect. And the placebo effect has to do with your expectations, that is what you're expecting to happen. So you've all heard of the experiments that people do and they have a placebo, that is a sugar pill or something like that that really isn't supposed to have any impact. And what they find is that it often does help the person uh, get well. Uh, whatever it is that they're struggling with, this placebo actually shows that there's been progress or there's been an improvement in the person's condition because of the placebo. So they call that the placebo effect. So what is it? Well, it's that person's expectation because they don't know that it's a placebo. They think it's an actual pill. Right? So they think that this pill is helping them and because of their expectations, because of their beliefs, because of their hope, they actually heal themselves. They actually experience an improvement in their conditions. So remember those words, okay? Expectations, expectations, beliefs, hope, okay? So the placebo effect, and there's nothing wrong with the placebo effect. It's just an effect. It just happens. 
you actually want to use the placebo effect to help you, to give you momentum, to motivate you. But here's what often happens in the smooth speech journey and in many other journeys as well, is you'll experience, I'm just going to call this the placebo effect, so you'll experience an initial boost, right, an improvement in your speech. And this can happen within the first one to three weeks. Usually it lasts about one to two weeks or so. And then what happens is there's a dip. You'll experience a dip. And what happens here is that some people will say, oh, it's not working now. I'm regressing. I thought that this wasn't going to work, right? So then they start becoming frustrated or distraught or discouraged because they experienced smooth speech here, right? They experienced smooth speech. They experienced confidence. They experienced calmness, right? And then all of a sudden it just drops off and they're like, ah, I knew this wasn't going to work, right? Because they had probably gone through other programs before and experienced that placebo effect. And then when it dropped off, then they dropped off. And then they said, oh, it doesn't work. Okay, let me try this guy's. Let me try Michael Williams's program. He says it's scientifically based. And they experience it and they go, oh, wow, it's, it's working. And then there's a dip and they go, oh, the same thing. None of these programs work. No, it's not that none of the programs work. What's happening is you're experiencing this normal drop off, this normal dip. Once this placebo effect has worn off, once, your ex, once you run up against for example, a block or you get stuck or your confidence is down and you have a bad conversation, all of a sudden reality sets in, your expectations start to change. Well, wait a minute, I thought I wasn't supposed to get stuck anymore. I thought I was supposed to feel confident all the time because I'm taking this program. So those are unrealistic expectations. So when our unrealistic expectations or when our expectations in general are not met, when they go unmet, we become discouraged. Some people become depressed. So what I'm telling you is that you can expect to experience this boost. The placebo effect can also be explained by what we call a chemical change, right? It's initiated through a chemical change in our brain. So there are certain chemicals hormones and so forth and so on, that when they're activated, we become excited or we become calmer. We have more hope, we have more confidence. Well, this is a chemical change and the chemical change is generally temporary. It's short term. So we experience this, right? So this combined with what we call, and, and this actually can cause this, but this combined with what we call the placebo effect, our expectations, and then this chemical change, feeling excited, right? And then we have this boost and then there's this drop off. When the chemical change kind of wears off, there's this dip, I call it. Well, here's what happens. And here's what needs to happen. The first thing that needs to happen is that you are going to want to understand this process, this cycle, right? Once you understand it and you expect it to happen, then the impact on you is not as grave, right? It's not as terrible as it can be for some people. So you expect, okay, I'm starting this program. I'm probably going to see a boost. I'm going to see an initial boost that may happen for a week, a few days, could happen for a few weeks. And then I'll, I might experience a dip, okay? And sometimes it, this can last for a month or so, and then I might experience a dip. And when I experience that dip, even though intellectually, cognitively, I understand what's happening, I still may feel disappointed. That's, that's understandable. You still may feel disappointed because you're on a high. You were enjoying the confidence and the calmness and the smooth speech, the easiness and effortlessness of speaking smoothly. And all of a sudden that drops off. And even though you know it's going to happen, you expect it, it still doesn't feel good. But because you understand it, because you're aware of it, you're able to stick in there and do what you need to do to, to press into 
right, to press, to press into this dip, right? You want to press into it and not slide back down, okay? Not regress all the way back because, oh, I thought this was supposed to be just a straight upward trajectory towards success. No, I understand that there might be an initial upward trajectory, but then there's going to be a dip and there's going to be other dips. And I'm going to show you what that looks like. So I'm experiencing this dip. And the way that you deal with this is you set your expectations to one. Set your expectations to one. Set expectations to one. Some people say zero, I say one. And here's what I mean by set expectations to one. You should look for very, very small incremental changes in your progress, right? Again, you might see this initial huge boost of progress, then you experience a dip, and when you're in that dip, you just start looking for incremental small changes. So here's an example of that. Let's just say you have a 10-minute conversation. You're talking to someone for 10 minutes. And let's say pre-Pro90D, the whole 10 minutes, you were struggling. You were blocking, you were stuttering, you were speaking too fast. Whatever your challenge was, pre-Pro90D, you were struggling the full 10 minutes, okay? Now let's say while you're in this pro or you're on this pro 90 d journey, you speak smoother for two minutes, right? You speak smoother for two minutes and eight minutes, it's still choppy, it's still bad. All right, so most people would focus on what? What would most people focus on in this situation? Most people would focus on the eight minutes. Oh my goodness, had a 10 minute conversation and basically the whole thing was just terrible, right? Uh, I must be regressing, this program isn't working the way that I expected. Uh, Michael, you suck, <laughs> okay? And this program sucks and everything sucks, life sucks. So eight minutes, terrible, two minutes, smooth. But wait a minute. Before, pre-Pro 90D, it was 10 minutes that sucked. Well, now it's only eight minutes. What, what's the difference? What caused the difference? Well, what caused the difference was your work, right? You're following the daily routine, which we've talked about includes affirmations, right? Because we need to change. That's not the only thing. So if you're watching this video and you're not in the Pro 90D program, I know other people do affirmations as well. But this is a holistic program, and yes, it includes affirmations, but it also includes visualization. It includes um, auto-suggestion as well. All of these things so that we change our mindset. We change our thinking on a subconscious level and on a conscious level, right? So you're doing your affirmations, your visualizations, your whatever. You're doing your audio listening, which also changes what we think and the way that we think. You're doing your modeling practice, your free, your free flow speaking, free flow, your free flow speaking, say that really fast, free flow speaking exercises, your breathing exercises. You're also out there embracing and creating more and more speaking opportunities so that you can practice real time, right? This is critically important. So you're doing, you're doing all those things. You're trying to do those things. You might not be as successful as you'd like, but you're trying to do them. Now you can do the practices. You don't have to try to do that. You can do that. But then you're out there and you're trying to apply it to your everyday speech. And what you're finding is that you've had an improvement of two minutes. You say, well, that sucks. That's bad. No, it's not bad. Because what's happening now is as you're pressing into this, you're now creating what we call structural changes, structural changes to your brain, right? You are building neuronal connections, right? That's, that's representing smooth, calm, clear, confident speech. You're building neuronal connections that will represent 
you feeling more relaxed, you feeling more confident, you're not anticipating words, right? You're, whenever you do the affirmations or you talk to yourself right, throughout the day, reminding yourself to just relax, slow down, you don't have to rush, take your time, you are building a new pattern of thinking, so you're slowly building, you're making structural changes to your brain, and the structural changes equal long-term long-term change okay that's the key that's why you have to be consistent you have to be persistent you have to lean into the dip and keep working at it because what's going to happen is this two minutes is going to turn into what into three minutes and then four minutes and then five and then all of a sudden you're having a 10-minute conversation and your speech is smooth the whole 10 minutes. This is reflected by these long-term changes that come about because of structural and chemical, right? It's a combination. Uh, the structural changes is where you're now building these new connections, these new neural, neuronal or neural connections. And on top of that, the more that you repeat the same behavior, the more that you speak the same way and you think the same way, what also happens is you myelinate those connections, right? You insulate the connections. What does this insulation look like and feel like? This insulation, this myelin, you can research this, it looks like you're performing something with ease without thinking about it. There's no resistance there. So when, when you're just building a new habit, a new way of speaking, when you're just building a new way of thinking, I don't want to anticipate, I don't want to think about stuttering, I don't want to sit right, when you're building this smoother speech and this clear thinking, you're going to experience resistance, you're going to experience failure in a sense, right? Why? Because the connection is not there. right? And then even when the connection is there, you're going to have to think about it, you're going to have to activate it consciously. Why? Because it's not insulated, the connection isn't strong enough. But the more that you repeat it, the stronger the connection becomes, right? The faster the data is able to flow, the signal, the more insulated it becomes, the easier and the more natural and the more automatic it becomes. Does this make sense? So this is why it's important to repeat the same behaviors in the same or similar situations, right? So that you can strengthen, wire those connections together and you can insulate them, okay? So, if you start and stop, or you only do it a little bit, and you only do it sometimes, you only do it when you need it, and you only do it in this situation, but not that situation, then what happens is you never give your brain a chance to build those strong, insulated, neuronal connections, which is reflected in smooth, calm, clear, confident speech. Does all of this make sense? So, what what the journey actually looks like is more like this. You experience this peak, then there's probably a dip, and then after that, you're going to experience, you're still going to experience dips, but guess what? It's going to be taking an upward trajectory, okay? So it doesn't mean that you're not going to have any more dips. Now, some people experience greater dips, longer dips, <laughs> right, deeper dips. But as long as they are sticking with it, as long as they are consistent, as long as they are working, as they're practicing consistently and they're being persistent, then they'll experience some dips, but they're moving in an upward trajectory. They're moving on an upward trajectory. Does that make sense? So what was only two minutes of smooth speech becomes three minutes, four minutes, five minutes, seven minutes, eight minutes, ten minutes, even though they still have some times where they still get stuck on this word or that letter and so forth and so on, but they're moving in this direction. Now, we talked about uh, making sure that you set your expectations to one. So what did we mean by that? We're talking about looking for very, very small incremental results. So that means 
If in fact you find that you spoke well for two minutes, you celebrate that. You don't focus your attention on the eight minutes, you focus it on the two minute progress that you made. If you were able to get started speaking one time in a day where usually you are not able to get started at all, then you celebrate and focus on that one time that you were able to do it well. You don't say, oh, the, the whole day I just wasn't able to do it. Well, no, you were able to do it once or twice or however many times. So often what we do is we color our experiences because of our expectations. So if we set our expectations to just go like that and for we to be totally, completely smooth, I'm doing the program, I'm doing all the work, I should be completely smooth and never have any problems and that's it, then you're going to be disappointed when you do get stuck. And you say, okay, what's happening? Am I regressing now? No, you're not regressing. You're just experiencing one of those dips on your way up, right? So what do you have to do? When you experience those dips on your way up, and those dips can look like uh, anticipation, right? This could be where you're still anticipating some words or letters. A dip could be uh, where you're getting stuck, right? Getting stuck. That could be what someone calls a block. Right? So you experience it and you say, wait a minute, I thought I wasn't supposed to experience those ever again. Well, there are still times, guys, where I still get stuck on certain words, right? Uh, they're stuck. I mean, technically, you call it a block or whatever you want to call it. There are still times where I get stuck. And if I sat there and thought about it, right, and stewed in it, then I would get discouraged and I'd get distracted and I wouldn't see myself as an excellent speaker. But I don't do that, right? Because uh, research shows that people who don't stutter generally have about a 2% rate of disfluencies. Just 2%. That's just the normal disfluencies. People who stutter can have a 10% rate or higher. Like I've worked with people who's way higher than that. I mean, they're way up there, 60, 70, 80 percent, right? Just they can barely talk. And that's not all the time in every situation, but in many situations, they're very disfluent at first. So two percent is normal. And this is, just, this is normal. That means that there are people out there who don't stutter, but their disfluency might be even higher than two percent. Could be five percent, but they don't necessarily stutter. One of the differences is is in how their disfluency affects them. Do they think about it? And if they start to think about it, and they, then it starts to become something that's repetitive, it may start to impact them psychologically, and then it could turn into stuttering, okay? Once it starts to impact you psychologically and it becomes repetitive in the same situations, now you've turned something into something worse than what it needed to be. So, you're going to experience these along the way. Some of you, and in fact, most of you will probably experience getting stuck from time to time, not being able to say exactly what you want to say 100% of the time, right? So when this happens, what do you do? That's what your tools are for. You pull out a tool, you use it, you put the tool back, and you keep going. And here's how I want you to think about this. I want you to think about it like you're, you're in a car. Okay, you're in a car. All right, and you go over a bump in the road, right? You go over a bump in the road, or you go into a pothole. Do you stop your car and back up over the bump and go, oh, I just went over a bump. Oh my God, I can't believe I just went over that bump. And just you're driving, you're backing up, you get out of your car and you look at it, and you go, where did this bump come from? Uh, I thought I was going towards my destination and I just ran over a bump, right? Or you run into a pothole and then you say, man, I just ran a pot. Let me stop, you back up into the pothole, boom. You just back up and you say, man, I just ran into this pothole. I, don't, I can't understand why. And you go up and you go back again, you go, I just keep going into this pothole. Why am I doing this, right? So what's happening is, you're now stuck in that pothole, on that bump, back and forth, back and forth over it, thinking about it, mulling over it, instead of moving forward towards your destination and adjusting as you go, learning how to navigate around 
the bumps and the potholes, maybe taking a smoother road, right? No, you're just backing up over the... So now you end up not arriving at your destination. Why? Not because you couldn't, just because you just stopped and you started focusing on the potholes and the bumps. So what you have to do is you have to look at this. I call this my bump in the road. Bump in the road approach, if you will, right? It's just a bump in the road. That's all it is, right? It's a bump in the road. And you just, okay, I just went over a bump in the road. Boom, just use a tool, adjust, keep going. And you'll find that the road gets smoother and occasionally you're gonna run over a bump. Everyone does, right? So you run over the bump, you use your tool, and you just keep going. You just expect that there's gonna be bumps in the road in your speech journey. You're gonna run over bumps and it's okay. As long as you're doing everything that you need to do and you're seeing progress, even if it's small, even if it's slow, you're seeing progress, then you keep moving because what happens is your progress will compound. It will compound, right? And when your progress begins to compound, it actually grows and it gets bigger and it uh, happens faster. But if you focus on the bumps, if you focus on the fact that you're not getting to where you want faster or that you're focusing on the two minutes or the eight minutes that you got stuck, then it doesn't have a chance to compound. Then you get distracted, discouraged, and you actually start regressing, not because of the program, not because you needed to regress, but you're doing it because you're focusing on the bumps. You're focusing on the fact that you went into a dip and you're staying there and you're, you're having unrealistic expectations of what's supposed to happen, what it's supposed to look like. So in order for you to be successful on this Pro 90D speech journey, you have to set realistic expectations, which means setting your expectations to one, celebrating the one or two minutes that you spoke well and not the eight or nine minutes that you didn't because the eight or nine minutes is going to change as long as you stay focused and you're consistent and persistent with your practice and your usage that is actually getting out there, using what you're learning, trying. When you try, what eventually happens is you're able to do it. You keep trying and you find that lo and behold, you've arrived at your destination of smooth speech. Okay? So this it's very, very important for you to visualize and understand that as long as you're moving on an upward trajectory, that you're, you are moving forward, you are, you are achieving smooth speech. And for some people it takes them longer and there are various reasons, but you are getting to where you want to go. Now, here's another fact and then we're going to wrap it up. So studies show it's about 18 to about 254 days to build a new habit, right? Build new habits. So the average is about 66 days, about two months. This jives with my own experience where I see, see people in about two months or so, they're, really, they're starting to build this habit. They're not done yet, or still at the beginning but they're building a habit about two months or so, sometimes a little bit before. 18 days being the minimum, that's about three weeks. It's about three weeks. You know, I start to see people make significant and more consistent improvement in about three weeks. 66 days it becomes even more consistent. And then beyond that, it can take you nine months, eight and a half, nine months, a year before it becomes fully automated, right? For some people can take them a little longer. For other people, it takes less than that, right? But just know that it's at least going to take you this amount of time. So in two to three months, you can see, you can build a habit, you can learn a new skill, depending on what it is and the complexity of it. You can see it, but it may not be automatic yet, right? You, re you may not have reached automaticity. And so you have to stick with it and not get discouraged. So when I say in three months, what I'm saying to you is that you can dramatically and substantially, like 100%, change your speech. So I see people come in and they can barely speak. And within the three months, 
they're speaking fluently. They're speaking smoothly. 100% of the time, no. But let's just say there's a 10 minute conversation and the whole 10 minutes they were stuck. Well, maybe in this one, they barely got stuck once, right? They barely got stuck once, once or twice and that's it. So, and now they're able to have longer conversations and more conversations and they're able to do more within the three months if you do this intensively, if you immerse yourself in the process. So just understand this thing is going to take time. But if you immerse yourself, you can see dramatic and incredible results inside of three months. I've seen it happen. I've also seen people get discouraged, uh, get distracted, and I've seen them start sliding back. Not because of the program, not because for some reason they weren't capable, it's just because of their mindset that they literally started to focus on the bumps and focus on the eight minutes and that discouraged them so they then started to slide backwards. All they have to do is change their mindset, change their mindset, focus on their improvement and keep pushing forward. So I hope this, is, this has been helpful for you and I hope that this helps you get a, cle a, a clearer picture and understand what you need to do to be successful on your smooth speech journey. Thank you so much for watching this. If you have questions, please feel free um, to email me. If you're a part of our coaching program, you can WhatsApp me. If you're watching this on YouTube and you're not a part of our coaching program, then you can visit our website, pro90d.com, and you can uh, check out the little chat bubble and send me a message about this. If you're a professional, and again, you're not already in the coaching program and you want to accelerate your smooth speech journey, then you're going to want to get in touch with me about our private coaching, which is the fastest way to smooth speech. And it's the way that gives you the, long, the longest term, the more permanent results. Okay? Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time.